This paper examines two cases of memory activism um, regarding two villages near Belozersk, a small town um, of around 9,000 uh, inhabitants in Vologda region. Um, the data were uh, gathered in 2018 uh, during short-term ethnographic fieldwork uh, in Belozersk uh, and in the following two years uh, using online sources. I want to uh, thank my colleague Varvara Kabusha, with whom I work on this project, uh, as well as a team of students uh, who participated uh, in the fieldwork. Um, so both cases presented uh, are initially small, uh, bottom-up projects, um, independent, uh, non-institutionalized. I find it interesting as an example uh, of memory work in today's Russia beside uh, state-promoted memory projects and historical uh, projects uh, or oppositional narratives. Uh, it helps understand how and why different publics get involved or why they st stay uh, disengaged and uh, why certain initiatives um, are more successful and other are not. Uh, the cases in question relate to the same region, um, roughly the same historical period, um, and they have connected topics. So the first, um, the first village is called Maexa. Uh, it historically is associated with fishery. In the Soviet times, um, there was a large uh, fishing enterprise along with fish processing fact factory uh, and ship repairing facility. Uh, Maxa is still inhabited, although like in many other places, uh, the, population, the population decreases. And today it is about um, or even less than 400 people. After 1990s, uh, factories have closed down. Uh, private smaller businesses uh, took place of this large fishery enterprise uh, and almost no one lives off fishing today, um, although some people do it as a hobby. The second village's name is Krhino. Uh, it existed in the place where uh, Shaksna River uh, connects uh, with Lake Bele uh, and uh, the major tragic event uh, in uh, its history is that it was drowned in the 19, 1960s uh, due to creating a water reservoir, a part of um, Volga ba Baltic waterway. Uh, it was drowned along with many other um, neighboring villages. Some houses were moved to other places, some were destroyed uh, and inhabitants were uh, relocated to other places including uh, the town of Belozersk uh, and Maexa village. So in Maexa, there is uh, a number of um, memory agent, agents, uh, and the memory is built in a decentralized way uh, with none of uh, the agent, agents claiming to be the main one uh, or impose the key uh, narrative or message. For example, Lubov uh, is a local historian uh, who started her work in Soviet times um, and continues to, to this day uh, to collect photos uh, and personal stories, to write about uh, the locals in the newspaper. Uh, recently, in, a, in recent years, she organized um, an exhibition in the library devoted to uh, fishing dynasties uh, of Maxa. So, families where for several generations people were involved in fishery. Uh, and she also organized some local celebrations, also connected with um, the life on a lake, fishery, uh, and even the event of uh, relocation due to building um, the um, Volga Baltic waterway. Uh, Antonina is a worker of a local community club also uh, retired uh, and one day she decided that she wants to pass on to share with her grandchildren uh, the stories uh, and the traditions of uh, the fishing the fishermen uh, the wisdom of the elders so she started recording uh, them talking about their past 
uh, sharing the, their um, personal um, tragedies and emotions, but also jokes and funny stories, um, just telling them about every, everyday life um, and uh, certain uh, traditions and superstitions. Um, the, the part of the footage uh, later became a part of uh, a museum exhibition in Belazersk. Mikhail, you can see him here with uh, his one of his boats, um, is um, the owner of a private museum called Traditional Boats of Belazersk region. He is a keen collector, a keen craftsman. craftsman. Uh, he makes boats, but also uh, craft um, objects. Uh, he makes souvenirs for selling uh, with his wife. And he is a very talented and charismatic tour guide with lots of uh, anecdotes uh, and sayings uh, and impressions, very engaging and um, very, very interested in uh, preserving Mayaksa as a fishing village uh, and preserving not just traditions and stories, but also the way of making stuff. Uh, finally, Natalia is a native who spent childhood in Maxa and decided to create a personal documentary, uh, one and a half hour um, of footage of her, uh, just going through the space of Mike's and uh, recalling various details um, from her childhood uh, of how it looked like, uh, who lived there, uh, who her friends, relatives, teachers were, and so on. So as you can see, um, there are multiple actors and uh, forms of work and topics that are um, a little bit random. They are sometimes ad hoc. So uh, memory actors work with what is available to them, uh, what they become personally invested um, in and interested in. Um, and it is not very large scale. It is rarely uh, seen and known outside of Belazersk and Maeksa. Uh, it contains both uh, positive and tragic memories and um, topics. Um, and um, Maeksa's story is a little bit concerned with um, the issue of modernization that drastically changes the way of life, um, the culture, the craft the skills. However, um, the issue, I guess, is partly reconciled due to the fact that the older generation was there uh, throughout the second part of the 20th century. And even when there was this larger fishery uh, enterprise uh, in a more modernized way, they still can, um, they were able to uh, share and uh, recreate, replicate some practices and traditions uh, and some folklore. Um, it is possible also not just to mourn this lost way of life, but to appreciate the skills uh, and the culture and even engage either playfully, um, ritually or seriously with the traditional practices with, um, again, the craft, the fishing uh, cuisine that uses fish uh, as, a, as one of the ingredients. And the story of uh, the fishing village is experienced by locals as uh, their story, because many families are connected to fishery themselves, or at least have some kind of recollections uh, about living near this uh, Lake Bele. Um, now to Krohinov Foundation. Uh, about a decade ago, um, Anor Tukaeva, um, a woman from Moscow, first encountered uh, the um, remains of the Nativity Church. And she decided it was her goal to preserve um, what is left of the church. Uh, she started uh, Krohinov um, Heritage Preservation Foundation. Um, and during the first year, uh, the progress was very slow. The work was very hard, um, hardly uh, uh, any 
government official was supportive uh, and um, was willing to collaborate. Uh, however, by the time we uh, have done our research, um, they uh, be became more prominent. They uh, gained prominence and publicity, uh, even got awards from the government and um, funding from various sources. Um, they had support from public figures such as Nikita Mihokov or Leonid Par Parfenov, uh, and also were pre just present uh, in uh, traditional and social media. So it's safe to say that uh, thousands of people in Russia have heard of Krakino uh, and were supportive of uh, their goal and the idea behind this uh, memory initiative. Um, it's need to, it needs to be said that um, the um, image of the church, um, this particular church uh, on, on the river, is very important. Uh, I think it's famous due to uh, several appearances. The first of them is uh, on a photograph by uh, Prokudin Gorsky, uh, seen here. Uh, it dates uh, to pre-revolution time. Uh, when the church was still a church uh, and uh, the village existed. Then uh, Kalina Krasna, a famous Soviet movie by Vasily Shukshin. Um, the plot is that the main character um, goes to the village in search for serenity uh, and, um, and some peace and um, he sees the church uh, on his way there. Uh, and the third one is uh, a documentary about Prokudin Gorsky uh, called Russia in Bloom uh, by a journalist, Leonid Parfenov. So here's the quote uh, from the very uh, ending of this documentary. What if we preserved the ruins and let them stay in their authenticity, like a monument to a country that no longer exists? So um, the image of um, the church that was abandoned, um, that, are, that is now in ruins, becomes a symbol uh, of the Russia that was lost during uh, the 20th century due to different reasons. And that represents uh, the true, authentic people's Russia. Um, and there are also two uh, titles that are often mentioned, Lighthouse Church and Ship Church, um, in order um, to call um, them the Nativity Church. And um, I think it is uh, also telling because they contribute to this uh, romanticized, um, idealistic image of, of the church, which is very spiritual, very um, authentic. And um, it is also interesting that uh, although it is literally the church um, in, in the center of this initiative, um, rarely someone mentions uh, religion and um, no one tries to present it as uh, a way to preserve orthodox um, heritage. Rather, it is just cultural heritage and there is this spirituality uh, without a certain religion behind it. So this is how the church looks like, um, looked like in recent years. Um, here is the design proposal for future memor memorial, so it is not yet done. Um, but you can see that um, the activists uh, want to preserve uh, some part of the church as a ruin. So they do not want to restore it anymore as they uh, would like to do in, in the beginning of um, Krakino project. They want to save it um, as Parfenov proposed, uh, as, as a monument as a ruin, uh, but also add uh, a small pier for light bo boats, um, a place where visitors can stand and appreciate the view, uh, and also a chapel uh, for those who want to use it again as, as a church. So here are the four aspects of four sides of Krakenau project, 
all uh, centered around um, this place uh, and around saving uh, the sort of material object. Uh, I think they, they are all um, equally important and it's um, uh, curious how they sometimes reinforce each other, but sometimes uh, contradict each other. They may contradict each other. Foundation needs the help of local citizens, uh, help and support, uh, but it doesn't get um, a lot of it. Um, and I think it is for uh, the following reasons. Um, despite the fact that the memory is presented as the memory of the common lost past, um, locals do not perceive it as their story. They do not see it as reflecting their past or their feminists, uh, feminist past. Um, probably due to the fact, in part, that the project is run by, by outsiders and outsiders from uh, larger cities, such as Moscow especially. Um, moreover, the fact that it's a church uh, also contributes to the, the, the controversy because locals see other ruined abandoned churches in Belozersk and they think that they require attention too and they would like them to be saved in the, per in, in the first place because there is this um, promise of them being a real church with their own parishes. Um, there is misunderstanding uh, and ambivalence of the place's future, uh, which uh, also causes si some um, people being an really annoyed and annoyed. And then um, there is what I call memory shaming. So um, the locals are not just expected to uh, be in favor of the project, but they are expected to act upon it, so to take play, to take part. Um, and when they don't, um, the project representatives um, in their interviews, in their public speeches, uh, mentioned that um, the local people are not interested in their past. They are not um, willing to preserve uh, or care about their roots uh, and their heritage. Uh, and that is um, a pretty bad claim, uh, which makes um, them look, the locals look not just uh, not simply passive, but amoral. So to sum up, uh, there are those two projects um, that are very different in their approaches um, in what narratives they work with and how they do it. Um, it seems like what Krino uh, Foundation does is much more uh, sustainable and uh, at times professional and at times, at times uh, successful. Um, however, my ex uh, memory activists, for example, do not experience uh, that much difficulties with uh, gathering stories um, and talking to in informants and um, asking them to contribute uh, their photographs, artifacts um, to take part uh, because they are insiders, uh, not outsiders uh, to community. Uh, it is interesting how um, because Krohino is centered on this one message and narrative uh, they have to curate personal stories, they have to comment on narratives in order to align them uh, with the general idea of loss, uh, of tragedy, of the old way of life, of life versus the new one or its destruction. Um, and in my ex, uh, um, even if it is working with uh, personal stories, um, there is more um, own voice, uh, either voice of the family members, uh, the um, other locals, uh, or uh, memory activists use themselves as carriers of the narrative. So, for example, um, one is um, a fisherman and craftsman uh, himself, uh, another grew up 
in Maixa, or another is a relative um, of the fisherman. And despite uh, many differences and tension, um, I guess there is some convergence between initiatives. Um, so, for example, the Serbsk inhabitants organized uh, cleanups on other churches' territories. Um, and it's not um, a coincidence, I, I think, that uh, Antonina had chosen documentary as a form uh, because he, she had this um, example of um, collecting personal stories and recording them uh, using audio and video. Uh, and also successes of uh, Krahino seem to push independent local historians to make their work more visible, more public, even if they previously did not really uh, think of it or uh, were not really interested in doing this. <laughs>